Have you ever been playing your 3DS and thought to yourself, hmm, yeah, I wish I could have a desktop operating system right about now. That seems like a lot of fun. Well, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be installing macOS on a 3DS. And to take it even further, I want logic on here too. So to begin with, part of this setup can't be done on the 3DS, so we gotta go over to a computer. I have chosen to use macOS, and luckily, I just so happened to hackintosh my laptop in the last video, you should check it out. So now we're gonna go in and prepare my SD card for all of this. So I've already downloaded quite a few files in preparation for this, and over here I am FTP'd into my 3DS. So yeah, big thanks to Terrahole in it for their mini vMac 3DS port. And for our purposes today, we're gonna be using this release, the latest pre-release, because I want to accomplish as much as the installation on my 3ds as possible so we need to make a new folder called vmac like that and we're gonna go with a mac 2 even though it might be a little slower to emulate because i want color and we're gonna do four bits just to kind of balance it out a little bit then it goes and we're gonna grab the mac 2 rom and i'm just gonna grab a blank 192 megabyte disk file and then we need the installers so we're doing mac os 7.5 so yeah we're not gonna be running any modern applications on here but it'll still be fun so i think these just have to go on the root as well well, in they go. So according to this guide here, disk images must be auto-loaded at runtime. So we have to make sure they're named like this. And it does say to make sure you have your OS image ready to go before copying your disks to your 3DS, because you can't swap. Uh, but I'm just going to ignore that. I want to see if we can do the entire installation on the 3DS, which is probably not going to go well, but I just kind of want to see what happens. Huh, that's interesting, isn't it? I've got two mice. Huh? Back to the 3DS, and as you can see, I have the homebrew launcher because I modded this thing long ago. We're going to launch it, and here is Mini VMac. So yeah, this is a Macintosh 2 emulator. They also have a Macintosh Plus One and a Macintosh 128K, which is like the original Macintosh computer, but I wanted the one that can do the most, and hopefully this is the right choice. So here we go. Oh, it beeped. Oh yeah, look, there we go, it loaded. Oh, it's telling me no. no. I know why it's telling me no, because there's nothing on the disc that it just tried to mount. So we gotta first scale this properly. I wish there was a four by three mode. I guess we just get to look at it stretched out like that. That's fine. So I know it says you can't swap discs, but let's try to do it anyway. Here we go. Let's insert disc one. Oh, look, it's working. Welcome to Macintosh. So we're actually starting to install it now. Welcome to system 7.5. Your Macintosh needs certain software to start up in System 7.5. Now, this is before they called it macOS. It's working. The installer cannot update. Yes, I know. Hold on. Let me switch disks. Let's put the system disk back in. It let me click install, and it's giving me, like, fingers that are counting. <gasps> Preparing to install. Whoa, okay, so it's working. Very little setup needed. This video is going to be, like, five minutes long. Quick, something break, so it is funny. What if we do install disk 4 with an Australian accent? Oh, hi, mate. It's me, Dank Pods here. Hello? Hello? Yeah, remember how I asked for something to go wrong like two minutes ago? Yeah, it seems as my recording just stopped randomly through this video. So yeah, in true Metrobyte fashion, something broke. Not the macOS install, that's fine, but the thing that's recording itself. So very cool, very nice. Anyway, let's continue. We're on install disk 7 now. Do you need a dopamine hit? Here's a vine boom sound effect paired with a picture I found online. Disk one, there. Now ask me for disk seven. Actually, it, I think I already did disk seven. So you don't get to see the last three disks or whatever. But it's fine, I was just doing a bunch of annoying voices anyway, it doesn't matter. Probably would have given you a headache. Making your Macintosh happy? I wish you could make me happy. Does this come with therapy software? Optimizing system file. Just the one system file. John system file. Hello, well, look, it's telling me stuff. After this installation is complete, you should consider installing QuickDraw GX and PowerTalk. Advertising in my macOS? 7.5? I don't think so. This is literally 1984. I, it, well, it just clicked continue for me. Okay, well, just continue doing what you're doing then. The installation was successful. If you are finished, click quit to leave. Uh, all right. So here's a good point to show you all the controls. You press select to switch to the touch screen to be able to move the mouse. Press it again to go back. Start is supposed to change the scaling, but it doesn't. I don't know why. This is arrow keys. Circle pad moves the mouse, and then the two shoulder buttons click the mouse. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna restart our Macintosh. Wow, it's like it's working without any issues. I'm not really sure what to say. It thinks it's 7.34 p.m. That's not really correct, but whatever. Well, cool, we're on a desktop. I'm gonna load a bunch of software on here and then we'll give a few things a try. 
See if we can make some music on here. Or maybe play a game. Can it run Doom? I would sure hope so. But before we do any of that, we have to actually be able to extract some of these things. Because most old Mac software is in SIT format, which is a Stuff It archive. And in order to extract those, we need Stuff It Expander. So we're just going to actually insert this disk image here. And I'm just going to open that up. There it is. Wow, this is running so much better than Windows 95. We might actually be able to accomplish things in here without it taking 25 minutes to load. Welcome to Stuff It Expander. Okay, let's install. Yes, I agree to your 25-year-old software license agreement. I'm sure it's way less malicious than ones we have now. The worst this thing can do is extract your files. You download something like this now, it's gonna go, Oh yeah, by the way, those files you just extracted, we own those now. Anyway, where do I want to install it? Let's make an applications folder. There. Now it's just like modern macOS. Install. You know, I have this set to all out speed. I don't think I've even seen it hit two times. But that's fine. It's about as fast as it would be 25 years ago, so... Ah, don't beep at me. There. Now we have stuff at Expander. And we can expand SIT files. Yay! Time, now it's time to insert like 400 different disk images at once. That'll go great. Oh, but also we need to import FL because we need to import these files in here. Hopefully that works how I think it will. Let's see. All right, now we have an alias of it and we're putting it on the desktop. Good. Let's see if this works on a 3DS. I know on the computer version of this, when you open this, you can just drag your files on top of it. Let's see what it does here. Raw mode access feature not available. Uh-oh. Yeah, I feel like that's something that it needs. Okay, well, we might have to use Mini VMac on the computer now. Hello there. Yeah, now we're on my computer. So basically what we have to do, we're going to get all the SIT files from here into their own disk image so that I can just extract them within Mini VMac on the 3DS. We're going to first boot our system disk. I should probably actually get it from the 3DS. Hang on. Oh, right. It's 200 mega. It's going to take like three minutes to transfer from here. Hang on. That was totally a folding laundry moment, am I right guys? Anyway, so to get all these in here, we're using import FL. We gotta get our humongous disk in here. Bloop. And we're gonna call it... No, don't open. No, I want to rename you. There we go. Sit files. How creative. If it's a sit file, I want it in there. And it looks like HQX files also. There we go. Too many disk images. Okay, oh, it only did three. I guess we can only do three at a time. Okay, we are allegedly done importing. And I say allegedly because I probably maybe have forgotten something, but we'll get to that when we get to it. I'll see you back on the 3DS. And maybe we can get logic working. I'm not sure how well we'll get it working though, because... This is back before even Apple owned Logic. It was called eMagic Logic. Hello! Where's my stylus? This thing's always falling out. Okay, we got software, and you're gonna watch. So I have a couple extra things on here. I have disk copy to open floppy disk images, and virtual CD-ROM utility to open .toast files and, you know, other stuff like that. So, now we can actually open stuff. Anyway, as you can see, I've got Logic Audio 4 for a 68K Mac, and it's a little dongle. And then we're going to have to install some MIDI stuff to actually get sound out of it. But anyway, let's extract these and see if the entire universe implodes on itself. That was fast. Did anything happen? Okay, maybe we need to put these on the desktop first. Will it expand properly now? That was pretty fast. I don't think it worked. Yep, there's nothing in there. What is going on? All right, well, does it work with the computer version? I haven't done anything to these two files. I just imported them with import FL. So what happens if I just double click it? What? Why, why is it working on here? This is the same operating system and the same files. I will say it wasn't working just a second ago until I restarted the virtual Mac, but I guess it's working. Yay. I'll just uh, put these on the disk image and then we'll put that on the 3DS. Good enough for me. And then we can finally live our dreams of having logic on a 3DS. What is wrong with me? <laughs> okay, well, I don't think we should celebrate just yet. Is there anything in this folder? Oh, good. That's what that's supposed to look like. All right, well, everything's in here. Let's get the dongle emulator too. Wow, what do you know? It just works. Maybe there's just something weird about how the 3DS is emulating the Macintosh's memory. I think I did read that the Mac 2 emulator is a little bit less stable than the Mac Plus, but whatever, it's working now. Does it open? Ah, oh, it beeped. Would you look at that? It's working. And then open it. There's not enough memory. Well, that's okay, let's take care of that right now before we put it on the 3DS. If you're somehow in 1994 having an issue with your Macintosh 2's memory, just click the file you're trying to launch, go to File, Get Info. Oh, oh your suggested size 6,000 kilobytes. No. We're gonna give you 4,500 kilobytes. Now it opens. Wow. 
Look at that. It's an ancient version of logic, yeah, but it's not going to have sound yet because there's some extra things we got to put in here. So in order to force logic to make sound, and by make sound, I actually just mean virtual instruments because I'm pretty sure it would make sound if I just put a wave file in there, but we're making MIDI music. In order to do that, we need QuickTime. What, you're running out of memory to drag a file? There's nothing even open. We might want to just restart this before we try anything else. There's not enough memory to restart it. Well, I'm sure glad I'm setting this up in the computer version, otherwise it would just be a Annoying. And we also need Open Music System, which we're going to basically be using to make all of Logic's MIDI operations shove themselves through QuickTime's MIDI instruments. So yeah, we're just going to have like general MIDI sounds, but I like those. Perfect! That means it's working. And theoretically, and also unfortunately, as long as this application is running somewhere, Logic's MIDI should go through this and we'll be able to make some glorious general MIDI music. The only problem with that is it's probably gonna run out of memory because we only have eight total megabytes of memory and already half of it's being used just by the system and OMS. So that's really good, but we'll find a way to get around it. Let's get all this on the 3DS now. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention we're switching to 8-bit color now. And now that we've got the desktop of a crazy person, we can take a look at some stuff. Okay, so we do have some games here. We'll take a look at these after we look at Logic. And probably by this point, you're wondering why. I unfortunately do not have the answer for you. It's probably just because I'm a bit insane. And I just think it's kind of cool. But anyway, will it work? Well, the files are here. That's a great start. Let's start the dongle emulator. Oh yeah, this is because you had to plug a physical license key into the computer. This just emulates that. And then we have to run OMS. All right, now for the final test. Can I just open Logic now? Hmm. What if we just strip away this thing's memory? Surely it can survive on less than a thousand kilobytes. That's a little excessive just for a little dongle emulator. Yeah, 384 is fine. It launches. What else is our memory hog? I think the OMS thing is actually a lot of a memory hog. I'm <laughs> basically lobotomizing applications right now. No, you don't need 900k. You can have 512. That's enough for you. Does it still make sound? Yes. Okay, the lobotomy is complete. Now do we have enough memory to launch logic? No, we need that much? I'll just chop off another part of its brain. 4,000 kilobytes. You gonna play nicely now? Oh, look at that. Do I want to use OMS? Of course I do. I think that might actually be it. Holy hell, we have logic running on a 3DS. Does it make sound though? It does not. Why? Maybe let's just give the whole thing a restart. Shutdown could not be open because there's not enough memory. Uh, there you go. It just forced you to turn off. All better. Now for the moment of truth. Will I get sound if I press a note on the keyboard? <gasps> yes! We got sound! That means we can play music on the 3DS with logic. That's all the twinkle twinkle little star you're getting out of me. Well, I guess I'll be making a song in here now. Who else can say that they have logic running on a Nintendo 3DS? I don't think anyone can really say that. I might be the only person in the entire world that has done this. I guess it just takes a certain level of insanity to want to do something like this. But anyway, let's get out of logic now that we know it can do things. And let's look at some other things that this thing can do. So at this point, you're probably wondering, can it play Doom? Can it? Please tell me, can it? Um, and you're about to be disappointed because I already know the answer to that. Doom 2 requires 32-bit memory addressing. Um, yeah, this uses the Doom 2 engine, but, uh, this is basically the oldest version of Doom I could find that runs on a 68k Mac. And the reason it's even complaining is because the Mac 2, which this thing is emulating, only has 24-bit memory addressing. And I know it says to go to the memory control panel to change that, but if we go over there, there is no option to do so. Uh, yeah, no Doom on here, but as a compromise, I have a whole bunch of Doom-like games. The next thing I wanted to try was Duk Nukem. Oh, that's a really good frame rate. Wow. Yeah, this has no 3D acceleration at all, by the way. I just figured I would mention. Let's go to options and maybe try to run this a little better. Wow, that's smaller. I can't see that now. Jesus Christ. This is impossible. Uh, it's running. And by running, I mean it's kind of walking and you cannot see it. Okay, well, can it play Duke Nukem? Yes. What about Wolfenstein 3D? <laughs> I noticed that your Macintosh has a 68020 processor. It may run slowly. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that now. All right, we got music. I didn't know this game had music. Oh, wow. Oh, no. I don't think that's supposed to happen. <laughs> oh, my God. 
we have a new version of Wolfenstein 3D. Wolfenstein 4D. <laughs> okay. Seems to be running actually pretty smoothly, but <laughs> this is impossible. How do we get out of this? Can it run SimCity 2000, though? My favorite game of this era. Hey, it's working. Incredible. Okay, I've already registered this. It's the property of Blah, because <laughs> I didn't bother to put an actual name. Oh, wow. Well, we spent an entire year leveling a mountain. A very good use of our residence taxes. It does actually seem to be performing way better than emulating it through DOSBox, so there's that. Um, next. Okay, we have one final game here, and it's called Mazer 3D. It's a little just 3D maze type game. You basically just walk and collect gems. This would be a fun game if I had spatial awareness. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I would say this is a pretty capable thing now. Got a whole digital audio workstation on here. All the tools you could ever need. Games. Unlimited games that you can kind of hardly play. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Stick around to the end for a song playing from Logic Pro on this thing. <laughs> Whoops. If you were wondering if a Nintendo 3DS can run Mac OS, well, it sort of can. It can run up to System 7.5. Big thanks to Terra Hole in it, the developer of the 3DS port of Mini V. Mac. You can find links to everything that I've looked at so far in the description. And I also want to thank those of you that have become a member on my channel, so thank you very much. And anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you want to see more, subscribe, check out my music and the other channels in the description. And thank you for watching and enjoy the music.